HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, John and his son Jonathan Huber of Cross Point Associates sat down with HCAM News to talk about the purchase of the former Colella's property and the CVS lease of space in the building. Center School had patriotic pride as they celebrated Flag Day and lifelong resident and retired firefighter Bill Hamilton presented Hopkinton history and ice cream at the Senior Center as part of the town's 300th anniversary celebrations. But first, CVS Pharmacy coming to the former Colella's Plaza was the big topic of discussion at the most recent Board of Selectmen meeting. Dozens took to the streets prior to the Board of Selectmen meeting to protest against a CVS Pharmacy. Coming in to the space of the former Colella's CVS, lease space in the former Colella's, from owners Waltham-based Crosspoint Associates. Ever since, there has been many residents that are not happy about the move. We do all our shoppings at, um, at Hopkinton Drugs and we hate to see them close. And I know if CVS comes here, you know, they're going to have to close because they are... No, no, they can you know, drive the prices down and Hopkinton Drug cannot compete, they will go out. So I hate to see that happen. It's a small town and it's a small community and we don't want a CVS here. We just want Hopkinton Drug and that is it. I, I actually planted a couple of these signs at Hopkinton State Park. Now, don't we, as citizens as, as, and taxpayers, do we not have a right to plant a sign on state property? It was removed. That's not right. At the meeting, residents got the chance to discuss the CVS with selectmen. The Board of Selectmen, I thought that um, you had more of an interest other than just, oh, we're handed this and as long as it follows this. And I don't know what this theme is, but it seems to me that you're elected to represent us. And right now, if you look at the feeling of the town, you are not, this, we aren't being represented. Even if we had wanted to bring something else to that, to that location, we don't have the right to just do it. I mean, this is a private transaction between a seller and a little buyer. <coughs> it's, it's, there's no, we can't inject ourselves into this unless they need something from us, which in this case they didn't. And I can guarantee that if everybody who says that from this point forward, they're only going to shop at Hopkinton Drug, only shops at Hopkinton Drug, they don't have any worry if CVS ends up opening its doors. They'll have plenty of business to keep them in business, and you know, there will be no worries from that, from that point. Selectman Brian Herr felt the CVS lease was very sneaky and did not agree with the way that it was done. Uh, but I had a quarrel or an issue with the two words that you used there, unusual and typical. Uh -huh. So I've had the uh, pleasure of serving the town for 14 years in very selective and plenty of positions. And in my 14 years on the planning board, zoning advisory committee, board of select and personnel committee, and my wife could probably remember a couple others, I have never seen a business come to town in the cover of darkness or under the cover of darkness and try and ram something down our throats as this current situation is playing out. And I'm very interested in exploring all those avenues you just described, including acquiring the land by whatever means necessary. Town Council was also on hand to discuss the legality of the CVS. Uh, an application needs to be forthcoming if, if they in fact have changed any aspect of their operation. Uh, I assume when... The, Including the fact, land ownership? No, land ownership is not so much of an issue. Um, the, if it, because you're approving the business and you're approving the manager of the business when you issue a license. Not, um, they have to... Um, 
have the right to operate <coughs> the property, so they don't need to own it. So um, uh, I'm not aware that the, the business itself has changed or that the um, uh, or, or that the manager has changed. If it has, that needs to be approved as well. But if the physical location within the building has changed, that's something that, that needs to come before you for <coughs> A few residents argued that CVS is more of a health institution rather than a retail store. Therefore, it would be a zoning violation for a CVS to open in the 61 Main Street Plaza. There are several compelling arguments, I feel, from their own website that would indicate that they are, according to the law, regardless of why it was constructed, that would say they are indeed a health services facility. It's not a stretch, it's their words. It's kind of all over the place. Really sure on this that there's a 2012 bylaw excluding health services um, in the downtown facility, a business for health, health services facility. Is that accurate? Health services facility is allowed in the downtown district. Pay mm -hmm. Lazarus, uh, the land use planning and permitting director. A health services facility is not allowed by right nor by special permit in the downtown business district. So I would really second raising the board to really look into that because I can tell you it's my primary use of CVS in my daughter's history and also as a critical care nurse that CVS is a health care facility and that's the primary use of it. It's great that my mom stuffs my stockings with other things she can get from CVS but its primary use is really health care facilities so I think that by law if that's what we're looking at in policy and not where we stand personally by our values community and family, which is what we want to actually strive to present here, then I would challenge you to look at that. And Brian, thank you for having the same courage that my daughter has. Hopkinton drug owner Dennis Cates was on hand to thank supporters. Uh, Dennis Cates, Hopkinton Drug, 22 Kruger Road, uh, general manager of the Hopkinton Drug. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to thank the community for coming out and being supportive of us. Um, I got to tell you, it's very humbling. Uh, I've never dreamed of this, ever. Um, you've definitely made a change in my life. I thank you so very much. We are not going anywhere. We are going to try very hard. We're one store. We're not 9,000. We're just one store. It's going to be a heck of a challenge. But we're going we're to stand up and we're going to take that challenge as best we know how. Thank you all. After the public discussion, the Board of Selectmen Chair Ben Palaco made it clear that no decision would be reached during the night and a lot more discussion is still to come. But the conversation helped determine what needs to be discussed in future meetings. More details can be found about the Board of Selectmen meeting on our website, hcam.tv. Following the Selectmen meeting, Managing Principal John Huber and his son, Jonathan Huber, who serves as Director of Acquisitions and Leasing for Crosspoint Associates, joined me right here in the HCAM studios. Tom Nappy here, you're watching HCAM News, and I am joined today by John and Jonathan Huber of Crosspoint Associates. Guys, how's it going today? Very well, thanks. Doing well, yeah. All right, now to start off, can you tell us a little bit about what Crosspoint Associates does? Uh, we build, own, and manage grocery anchored shopping centers and commercial properties throughout New England. All right, now uh, Crosspoint Associates recently purchased a property over at 61 Main Street here in Hopkinton, the former Colella's. Can you tell us why you guys decided to make that purchase? I think it just it falls in line with our, our business platform of uh, owning uh, community shopping centers in New England communities. and. Uh, we are, we're close to home. Our office is in Waltham. Uh, some of us grew up in Natick. Some of us grew up in Belmont. We know the area. We love the town. And we're interested in buying a grocery anchored facility um, in communities around Boston. Now, uh, some residents are unhappy that a CVS is going there. What would you say to those residents? Well, I wish, I, I, I'm sorry that we've disappointed a number of people um, uh, as a result of putting in a CVS, but I think that it was really the, um, the demand that came out of the market. Um, 
and that's really what what spoke to the vacancy. Um, we we tried other other avenues, and our marketing campaign sort of centered on CVS at the end of the day, uh, when we were unable to deliver a grocery store. Now you mentioned in an open letter that you sent to the community that. Uh, you reached out to a number of grocery stores, but they weren't interested in the former Colella's Plaza. Why do you think that is after Colella's was successful there for so long? Well, Colella's was successful there for so long because there was no other competition in the market. As soon as Price Chopper opened, Colella's saw a significant decline in their sales year over year. Uh, when we brought those sales numbers to other grocery operators, uh, we thought there may be an opportunity for a different format store that had different offerings um, that would do well in this market, and unfortunately, that was not the case. Did CVS reach out to Crosspoint Associates about this, or did Crosspoint Associates reach out to CVS? We're in a business that we're in touch with tenants all the time, regularly. It's almost difficult to say who went to whom. Uh, we have CVS as a tenant in other facilities. Um, we have uh, regular meetings with the ICSC, which is the International Council of Shopping Centers. We're in contact with brokers and representatives of CVS on a regular basis, and we're always in constant communication with grocery stores as well. So we feel as though you know we have a, a good, fluid conversation with you know all levels of tenants in the retail business, um, so that uh, you know we try and get. The, get any vacancy we have in our portfolio out to the market on a very aggressive basis to all types of tenants. And uh, essentially, uh, CVS expressed the strong. Actually, their interest was very late in the process, um, but uh, it was it was a welcome interest because we thought it was a good utilization for uh, for the building and for the site. Some residents are worried that this could put Hockington Drug out of business. Um, was that a consideration in, in this process when, when CVS came to Crosspoint Associates? I don't think there's, that we have ever as a, as a company, nor am I aware that CVS has ever as a company had a mission to put other businesses out of business. I just don't think that's good business. I think that we, are, we do business in many, many New England towns. And basically, we've seen independents thrive, uh, and we've seen some of the national companies not do as well because they don't know the market as well. They're not as, they're not as accustomed to doing business in a small market. Uh, so I would say that uh, that is never anyone's mission. Uh, good business, everyone should be able to do well. They do. CVS does something that's different than Hoppington Drug. Hoppington Drug has its expertise. Uh, which CVS doesn't have. So we would expect both to do well. Now, during this process, did CVS mention the lawsuit with Hopkinton Drug from 2014? We're really not familiar with, uh, and it's really, we do business with the retail pharmacy um, division, and that's really the real estate division. Um, so we really don't know anything about the, the, the other uh, corporations that you know, are under the umbrella. Uh, was CVS a last resort to this location? Was there any other type of business or scenario that could have played out? Uh, it was really grocery stores that we first went to. Uh, there were a number that initially had interest, but after doing, uh, you know, uh, market intelligence came back to us and said no, and CVS was really one of the last people that came to us. Now, has Crosspoint Associates faced this much controversy before on a business Purchase is this the most controversial purchase that Crosspoint Associates has faced? Well, I th it's it's very unusual. Uh, I think that's what I I would have to say, is that um, we, as I said, we do business in a lot of New England communities. Um, I think we're very well received in the New England communities where we do business. Um, but I think this is unusual because um, we're really we're, we're really occupying a building with a use that's allowed by right under the zoning bylaws. And we're following the guidelines precisely. And uh, we're making very, we're only making interior changes to the building. So I've really never been in a situation where a, where a community um, has um, found fault for following a bylaw. And uh, that is, um, 
you know, that's the unusual part of it. So I'm not going to say that we haven't been challenged in other communities. I'm going to say that we've never been challenged for a basic property right. Right. Now, uh, lastly, um, you mentioned many reasons uh, why you were attracted to Hopkinton uh, to purchase a, a business here. C can you talk about if, with all this controversy, you'll be looking at uh, perhaps purchasing other properties in Hopkinton? I mean, as we said, we, we purchase properties throughout New England. If uh, the opportunity presents itself and we think that it's justified, then we certainly would be open to the opportunity. All right, terrific. I, w I guess I, I would say that, you know, given uh, that, that we do business in communities like Hopkinton, um, and one of the things we really try and do is be a good neighbor and involve ourselves in the community. It's not only Crosspoint, but we expect CVS would involve themselves in the community as well. And I think that we have opportunities to be uh, engaged in a number of ways. We've talked at length uh, with uh, Kalalas about what they've done in the community over the years and what things the town expects and what things we can be helpful with, whether it's uh, the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts or some of the opportunities to be helpful to the, the to the uh, women who run the, the hot dog stand, you know, they need parking, they have no parking for their facility. Um, so we've really just getting started in the process to figure out how we become a, a good neighbor. Um, we always join the Chamber of Commerce when we, when we uh, join a community. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We're sorry that we've disappointed people, but we hope uh, things can be turned around. All right, certainly. Well, thanks for taking the time to join us here on HCAM News, guys. Thanks for having us, Tom. Uh, Jonathan, thanks for coming in. Pleasure. John, thanks Thank for coming you. in. And uh, a lot more ahead coming up on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hi, we are the girls from... Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H-Camp Studios. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend, one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting H-Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. As part of the Hopkinton 300th anniversary celebration, lifelong resident and retired firefighter Bill Hamilton talked about Hopkinton history while attendees enjoyed ice cream at the Hopkinton Senior Center. Many enjoyed Hopkinton history and ice cream at the Senior Center as resident Bill Hamilton told many stories about Hopkinton's past and presented antique photos and postcards. The room was filled for the event hosted by the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee. Well, I presented a, from my memories uh, and the pictures I have of the history of Hopkinton back a couple hundred years, and uh, I tried to mix in a lot of anecdotes that, that I remember from people that were old when I was much younger, and uh, it, it's good to express these so they don't get lost. Mr. Hamilton told HCAM News about a memorable story while growing up in Hopkinton and some of the changes he has witnessed in the town throughout his time as a resident. My step-grandfather used to uh, be the treasurer of the bank and he didn't drive or have a car and he'd, he'd pack money into a valise and go out in the corner of Maine and Hayden Row and thumb a ride to Framingham and do his business and the money back in the police and come back to, to Hopkinton and he did that for years and years and years and never had a problem and you probably couldn't do that in this day and age so and it's pretty interesting that uh, when my mother was in school in the lower grades they built the center school and when I was in the fourth grade they built the first addition onto the center school 
uh, and I got to go to a half of my freshman year at the high school on Main Street, and then we moved up to the new high school, which is now the middle school, and uh, I there was 42 in my class that graduated from Hopkinton, and my granddaughter graduated two years ago and was 247 in her class. So the town is definitely growing, and uh, I don't know if it's all for the better or not, but it is growing. So. You can see pictures from the 300th anniversary event on seeninhopkington.org. Speaking of seen in Hopkington, other pictures you can see include students at Center School celebrating our country with their longtime annual Flag Day ceremony. Students sang patriotic songs and many were in attendance. Here are some highlights of the ceremony.
It is a busy summer so far on HCAM, and a lot of programming is coming up on our stations. Here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, to tell you all about it with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, June 26th at 5.30 p.m., acoustic rock band Lower Level performs favorite songs from all genres of music in the first of the 2015 Concerts on the Common series. On Tuesday, June 30th at 7 p.m., author Marjorie Turner Holman gives a presentation on the walking trails in and around Hopkinton. On HCAM Ed, step aboard the SS American for some high seas hijinks in the HMS Drama Club's presentation of the musical Anything Goes. Would you like to receive the HCAM Insider newsletter every week? If so, all you have to do is send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. If you do receive it, then please pass it along and help us grow. And remember to tune in to HCAM TV on Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 30, and to HCAM Ed on Comcast Channel 96 or Verizon Channel 31. As always, thanks for watching. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy summer.